what is going on with 2020 is what a lot of people are asking themselves, right? And I do think we can look at this through an astro astrological lens. Now, here's the thing. You can look at, especially we're talking right now, it's March 2020 at this moment. And so we're going we're through a lot of different things, right? We're talking about like, in particular, the, you know, the coronavirus spread and how this is now a global issue. It's not just, you know, relegated to one country. It's a global issue that people are facing. And it's interesting. It's happening during Aquarius season aquarius the collective groups so there's that there okay and i'm going to talk about that aquarius energy in a moment let's set the stage all right and so the astrology i'm not so one we can look at anything any way we want to we can look at this as from a medical lens we can look at through a scientific lens we can look at this through a sociological lens right how are people um responding right? How is it influencing people's interpersonal relationships? Psychological lens. We can look at this any way we want to, and it's probably smart to look at it in multiple ways. I'm simply talking about the astrology of it right now and how I'm interpreting it and what the energy is saying, right? These placements are giving us clues to why people are responding the way they are and what energy is needed if we're going to see any resolution. So let me talk about that. So let me set the stage for you. A lot of astrologers already said at the beginning of 2020 that there was going to be a lot of intense energy, right? Because Jupiter was moving into Capricorn and Pluto and Saturn had a conjunct, I believe it was J J January 10th. So two very powerful, strong planets. We're not talking about lighthearted energy. We're talking about transformative energy, karmic energy coming together. So they were at the same degree, right? So J Pluto and, and Saturn have been in Capricorn for a minute. They both have. But when they met up with the degree that created the, the perfect, so to speak, conjunct for that energy. So this is serious, intense energy. So remember what I'm saying, Capricorn energy is about pract practicality, but it's harsh. It's about what we need to do to get the, the, the end result, ambition, goal, cardinal energy, single, let's get this done. It, it's single focus on getting something done. So it is the absence of emotion there's an absence there and again i'm not talking about the individual capricorn person i'm simply talking about the energy see the difference here i'm not talking about people i'm talking about the energy okay this video is about the energy so we have capricorn which is about the goal which is about um getting what you've earned right it's about all those different things but then jupiter goes into capricorn and jupiter leaves sagittarius so sagittarius and jupiter work well because jupiter is ruled sagittarius is ruled by jupiter but now we have jupiter in Capricorn so now we're actually shedding the light and that is why now you see a lot of people questioning companies and workers and some workers don't have paid sick time right because Capricorn is the work 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 to get what you need ambition goals right it's that's good old plain fashion you'll get the reward once you do the work that is Capricorn energy Jupiter sheds light. Jupiter brings wisdom. So what's happening right now, besides obviously, um, you know, a, a situation where we have a lot of c concern about the health of the nation, we have Jupiter shedding light on that. Jupiter, that energy is shedding light on the conditions of work and how people have been told the tradition and especially in American society of what it means to be employed, right? Um, how a lot of people say like, well, America doesn't have a good work-life balance. In America, you know, there's people who are working hard, but they're they're not insured or they're underemployed and things like that. So Jupiter is shedding light on that. Jupiter is always going to do its job, even if it's in a sign it's not really comfortable in, right? Because Saturn and Capricorn works well together, but Jupiter wants to be free and express itself. So if Jupiter can't be free, it's going to shed light on something in order to try to break free. Again, I'm talking about all this from a purely energetic level. So I'm setting the stage for what's happening. So let me move on to what's happening right now. So especially, again, I'm focusing mainly on the social climate that we're in right now. Um, again, I didn't plan to do a video like this, um, but I just kept seeing so many things. Then I looked back to my posts from early March and I was like, oh, the way I was interpreting that energy makes sense for what's happening right now with the spread of the coronavirus. And now we have schools shutting down and we have colleges shutting down and we have businesses shutting, you know, temporarily shutting down because we have, um, you know, governors and mayors saying no more than such such amount of people can gather. So we have all of those things happening. And for many of us, it's happened in like two weeks span of time, things have completely changed. So 
um, I want to talk about the astrology of this. So this is not me to say, I know everything, but it is for me to say like the way astrology works, sometimes you're not sure on what it's exactly trying to say, but you see it in hindsight. So for instance, in my Instagram, um, so I do, I did March astrology, what was happening. And then I did um, the signs for the individual signs, right? So what was interesting is what I noticed was that Mercury we knew was is was in ret retrograde, right? Beginning of this month, starting in February. So Mercury went between Pisces and Aquarius. It's going back, when I'm doing this video today, into Pisces. So it's bouncing between Pisces energy, which is sensitivity, right? And Aquarius, which is logic. And so that is why I believe there's been so much up until that full moon in Virgo, really, confusion around what the, what the virus is, what's the truth. People are like, some people are like conspiracy theory theorists, and some people are like, these are the facts, and all of these back, back, back and back things. So I think the Mer Pisces season, the Mercury, lended itself to that dream state where people just weren't sure. You had a lot of people saying, oh, that's not gonna, this is not gonna happen, or this is not gonna happen, whatever the case may be. Um, so instead of focusing on, um, you know, what is mercury and pisces and retrograde we're focusing on what could be and so you mercury and pisces first of all mercury doesn't like to be in pisces mercury wants to be in virgo or gemini even libra it wants to think pisces forces it to feel pisces forces it to dream and be in its daydream state and plus it was in retrograde so then mercury goes into aquarius right up until today, it, then it's, it's remember seesaw between the two signs. It goes into Aquarius, shifting our thoughts about society, but still not able to move forward. You see what I'm saying? Until it went direct on the ninth, and that's why if you look back at a lot of the stuff happening around March 9th, things started to happen a little bit. Like people started to make some connections. People started to say, "Whoa, let's start doing this," because that full moon in Virgo forces you to analyze. We can't be in a dream state anymore. And I said that in my post. Again, my post in the beginning of March was general, but it was tapping into this idea of the collective. And we have Aquarius energy. That's what we're focused on. So let's talk about it. So Mercury in retrograde did affect the way many people were interpreting this situation. Not everybody, because some people have been saying, ring the alarm, hey, what's going on? This is increasing. And some people are like, no, it's not a problem. So that's not that's not what I'm really talking about right now. I'm talking about the energy that allowed for people to respond a certain way. And so I'm not saying the astrology caused this. I'm saying the astrology can definitely impact the way people respond and the way in which a situation plays out. So Saturn is in Capricorn right now. It's about to go into Aquarius on the 21st. It needs to. It has to. Here's why. Saturn in Capricorn energy is, is very entrepreneurial. I'm going to get this done through good old-fashioned hard work, and I'm going to use the methods that I know are true and proven. That is Saturn in Capricorn energy. And it can reap its rewards and get its reputation and power and all those different things. But remember, we're following structure when we have Saturn in Capricorn. It's structure. It's the prototype. It's safe. It's caution. We're going to do this because this is how things should be done. We need to focus on the collective. We can't, if, if we're doing things that way and we're not seeing an, a, an, an improvement, we need now need Aquarius energy and not the sun in Aquarius. Here's why I'm going to tell you why we don't need the sun. It's not that we don't need it. I'm saying the sun in Aquarius is our expression. It's our ego. But Saturn is the actual hard work. So we need Saturn, the hard work to go into Aquarius because Aquarius is linked to groups, the collective, society. It is linked to technology, medical advancements. Like if you look up Aquarius, I'm not talking about the person right now. The energy of Aquarius is that revolutionary ideology type of mindset. It's ruled by Uranus and Capricorn. I mean, you're, sorry, Capricorn, Uranus and Saturn planets, right? It's ruled by both of them. So we have that outside of the box, unique mindset, but we also have the hard work effort right so again when again we're not talking about the emotional aspect of it and we're still going to have people who are have a little bit of empathy and care about others because you have seen some people have done that why that's that mercury and pisces that is why going direct that is why after mercury went direct you start to see companies now start saying hey some companies are like we're gonna pay the wages of our um we're gonna pay the wages let me look something up real quick um, we're going to pay the wages of our workers who are hourly and if they're losing um, 
time. You've had some famous people saying they're going to pay, like you have some like NBA players saying they're going to pay the wages of the people that work at the stadiums that they play in or whatever the case may be. Um, you have um, companies like really saying like I uh, think Trader Joe's if someone is calls out sick because because of the coronavirus they're not going to dock their pay and things like that I want to look something up real quick so we have all of these things um, that's Mercury in Pisces Pisces the collective compassion people are communicating it we're going to do this for you we're going to do that for you they're sharing that Okay, so that's very important for us to notice and to know about, okay, because Mercury, Pisces energy is still here, y'all. It's still here. So here's the thing, what we need to do. Um, but now Saturn needs to go into Aquarius because we need to see progress. I have my notes here, that's what I'm looking. Um, Aquarius is a progressive sign. So I don't think with a new, um, relatively new, I guess some people are like, hey, this virus has been out before, it was a different type, whatever the case may be. I'm not here to argue that. If something is new, you need to know how to either give it treatment, curb it. You need to do something new and you need Aquarius energy to do that. And Saturn means it's going to put Aquarius to work. So when Saturn moves to Aquarius on the 21st, it's going to work. Okay. Um, so you might see through that time, people now caring more about, hey, we need to care about society. Or you might even see people now changing the way they structure their uh their leave policies of certain companies. You might see certain companies change something as a result of this because that's Saturn and Aquarius energy. Do you know Saturn is going to be in Aquarius until I could, June or July? I believe it's July. I can look it up. I can look it up. I believe it's July. Let me look it up because I might have this up here already. Let me look this up. So think about that because sometimes people don't realize like the planets can move back to another sign relatively quick just like you just saw mercury do that little dance between pisces to aquarius now back to pisces it had to do that it had to do that it's almost like it had to do that for people to start like collectively saying hey this is odd this is weird let's communicate about this pisces hey we need to care about people and we're going to share out companies schools district cities are providing food for children who um re rely on like um schools for their meals like you'll see that as well we needed that that Pisces compassion to set off the stage of like, hey, this is the, we should care about others, right? Because if we start off this, this type of situation with Mercury and Aries, we might've saw a different energy where it's more about me, me, me. But because we have Aquarius and Pisces energy right now, we have the compassionate part. And then we also have the Aquarius of the collective, the community. Now, again, I'm not talking about specific places and countries and things like that. I'm just talking about the astrological lens of what I'm seeing here, right? Now, the problem is we still have some opposing energy though. Pluto was still in Capricorn. Saturn is still in Capricorn. So it doesn't mean everybody's going to be nice. And that's what I think you need to understand. Like a lot of news about like people hoarding, like buying all the toilet paper or buying all the food or whatever the case may be because they're panicking, but not thinking about others. But you do have some people thinking about others. So I know that the, it's easier for the media to like focus on that because that's real. Um, but I also think the Mercury and Pisces energy has called on a more collective. You see what I'm saying? Like on a day-to-day -day basis, you can't control what individual people do, but you see the, the, the people who have more control are saying, okay, we're going to lessen this or during this time, we're not going to shut people's water off or people's electricity off, you know, because of this virus. So you're seeing those who have that connection. Why? That dance between Mercury and Aquarius and Pisces. Okay. Um, so Mars and Aquarius. So, oh, what was my point? Um, my point was that <laughs> Saturn goes into Aquarius until July 20. Let me see, July 20. Let me look it up. I don't think it's July 21st. I believe it's July 1st. So what's the importance of that, right? Why does that matter? Yep. July, July 1st. It has to. First of all, Saturn needs to be in Capricorn right now for a reason, right? Right. When it goes back to, in July, there's a reason for that. And you'll see the reason when July comes. But my point is that it has to go into Aquarius right now and because it's trying to, you know, if we're going to see improvement at that time, it's just, it, it, it just flows really well together for us to try to see some type of advancement because Aquarius energy is like, let's advance this, let's improve society, right? We're going to do it. Now, the thing about Aquarius, sometimes it could be a rebel with a serious cause and it's like, Aquarius energy doesn't mind 
sacrificing one for all so you do have to understand that energy there aquarius is not i'm gonna hug you and love all of you it's different than pisces energy right it is like we're gonna advance society and society is gonna be better because we do this or we have these advancements and things like that so i'm not in all saying saturn and aquarius energy is going to bring perfection right but i am telling you that that is important during this time period and that is why we cannot afford to hate certain signs because we need aquarius energy in order to move forward um if you want to see any type of resolve with this um this pandemic so um mars goes into aquarius on the 31st of march and it's there until june 27th again it has to be there because now we're talking about action. So Saturn doing the hard work of Aquarius energy. Now Mars is the, the okay, we're going to now blow this out the water. Actions are peppered with logical insight. And it's a fixed mindset. So it's like when Mars and Aquarius comes through, it's like, I already know the answer to all of your problems. You just ride on with me. So um, they might sidestep. And I said this in my post. Again, I what, in the beginning of the month, I was not talking about this particular situation, but the energy. And I'm doing this video because I'm seeing what the post said. Now I'm able to connect it to the real events that are happening. Do you see what I'm saying? So um, I had said that with Mars and Aquarius energy, you have to sidestep personal glory for progress. It's not about you or the ego anymore. It's about ideology. It's about this is going to work and we have to do it at all costs. And ideas are the answer. So you might see around that time, new ideas, something that might be unorthodox, something people didn't look at before. They might be like, what? We're using this as a treatment or what? Like, this is the solution. So it's, 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 you can't, for something that's new, you need a new solution. If something is brand new or treated as brand new, right? We're talking about a virus here. Um, and again, I'm not here to debate who's been out and whatever. I'm talking about like, this situation is very different. Most of us have not experienced this. Most of us have not experienced school being shut for two weeks, three weeks, whatever weeks they're shutting them down for. Um, grocery stores being like, uh, shelves being bare in some places. Some places, like you just gotta know where to shop though. But um, like there are definitely places that are bare and there's some places where like people don't go to, everyone's going to the same stores, that's the problem. But um, you, have, you've not, you haven't really experienced that. Even when you experience like holidays, people rushing out to go buy stuff before Thanksgiving, you probably didn't see like a bunch of toilet paper missing or hand sanitizer missing. This is different, okay? And when something is a different situation, regardless of whether you think it's a conspiracy theory or this person, da, 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 whatever you think it is, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, we have to have a new solution to this. We can't just say, oh, well, this is like this. It's not like this. Regardless of what you think, the the out the, the the actions are different. The, the the situation is different. What we are seeing, the spread, it's different. So we do have to respond with a different type of solution. Okay? Um, and once we get to the end of March, we also are closer to, we have Aries energy coming up. And so why is Aries energy needed? Impulse and leadership. Why is that needed right now? Because we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't. Um, now, if we had started this, with Aries energy, we would have probably had people doing very impulsive things. And what we see now with Pisces is people were, people were kind of, well, let's see, right? Again, all of this astrology stuff is interwoven because you have the Capricorn energy. It's let's see what's been, let's, let's see, let's see what's been done before. Because you had the Pisces energy, right? We were in Pisces season. It was, let's calm down. Let's just see, let's just see, let's just ride, ride the wave, ride the wave. And now, We've seen what's happening and now you have new energy popping in that should be influencing the direction of the situation. Now, I don't know, you, you're, people are still going to have to work towards finding some type of treatment. Um, this is not disappearing overnight. Even if they are to lower the cases, you're still going to see the remnants of this. This is not going to be done overnight um, because it's already started to unravel some systems and in the US um, and other countries as well, but I'm talking specifically about what I, my perception of this. I am keeping aware of what's happening in other countries too, but this particular, I wanna talk specifically about what I'm seeing where I'm. Um, so the difference with Aries season, why I think it was actually, again, horrible situation, but I think that it's starting in Pisces season allowed people to not be impulsive. Now, some people may argue like, because you didn't act, you could've did this, you could've did that. 
But I think that the, now that people have seen it and seen like where this is headed into, you now can't go back and say, let's just ride this out. You see what I'm saying? Because now the Aries season is going to require people to kind of be leaders. It's going to require people to kind of take some action. It's going to require people to act bold. Because when we have Aries and Aquarius energy, so what we're going to have, we're going to have Aries sun. Um, when does the Mercury and Aries happen? Mercury and Aries happens April... 11th april 11th mercury and aries um the sun in aries i believe the 19th in a few days um so what's going to happen with that let me just look it up because some of these like i believe it's that um i know you would think i have it memorized but certain signs are a little bit different like they don't end on the 21st and 22nd um so what was i going to say um sorry i'm trying not to drag this on i'm really not to I'm trying to cut this at 23 minutes. I don't want this to be too long. My point being is we need the, yes, April 19th. See, I knew what I was talking about. All right. Yes. When you have Aries and you have Aquarius energy, we now have the rebel, the revolutionary idea, the boldness. We're going to do this. We're going to act. Now, we do have to watch out for someone acting and not thinking. So it's very important to keep that in mind. We can't just act without thinking. We also have the new moon in Aries on the 24th of this month. This is March. I'm doing this video. Um, we have the new moon in Aries, right? So culminating new ideas of like how to channel your independence to focus on something. How do we use that entrepreneurial um, go-getter? Let's do this type of energy. Now, again, I'm not talking about the individual. You have your individual life. I'm talking about the collective and that that new moon in Aries is kind of planting the seed for that. There's going to be people who are now thinking about new ideas, new solutions. How do we do this differently? How do we try this, try that? There might be a few things they're trying out that they're not telling you about right now in order to see what treatment actually works. And I, I guarantee, well, I can't guarantee it, but I think that whatever does work, um, if they come up with a treatment, it's going to have the beginning stages of it are going to start in March. It, any cure, any treatment, anything they tell you about that ends up working would have started in March. The groundwork for it started this month or earlier. Like something important happens in March that lays the foundation for this and allows for that Aries energy to carry it and say like, okay, like we're gonna try this. Um, that's what I'm saying. There might be something new that you see happening once Aries season hits, you have that Aquarius energy because April is gonna be something different. It's gonna be a different component, a different energy, a different flow in regards to the situation. But that is it for this video because I do not want to go on and on. And I did say I want this to be under 23 minutes. So if you got through this video or you watched any of it, thank you for watching.